we're going to talk about atoms and atomic mass. Indicate the numbers of protons, neutrons, and electrons in the following atoms. We're given the symbol Zn with the number 64 on top and the number 30 on bottom. What do these numbers mean? Number 30, which is located on the bottom left, is the number of protons, or what we call the atomic number. 64 is equal to the number of protons plus neutrons, which we call the atomic mass. Number of neutrons is equal to the atomic mass minus the atomic number, or 64 minus 30, which is equal to 34. So this atom has 34 neutrons. The number of electrons is equal to 30. The number of electrons is always equal to the number of protons or equal to the atomic number. This will be given problems where we'll have Zn with just the number 64 on the top left or Zinc-64. The number of protons is still equal to 30 because that's the number of Zinc on the periodic table. The number of Zinc on the periodic table is equal to the atomic number which is always the same in any, in any periodic table that you find. The number of protons is always equal to the atomic number, which is 30 in this case. If any element did not have 30 protons, then it would not be zinc. The atomic mass is equal to 64. We're given this in the top left corner next to the symbol, or next to the dash in zinc 64. The number of neutrons is always equal to the atomic mass minus the atomic number. We know the atomic mass to be equal to 64, and the number of protons, or the atomic number, equal to 30. 60 minus 30 is equal to 34 neutrons. The number of electrons is equal to 30, because it's always equal to the atomic number, or always equal to the number of protons, which is 30 in this case. The same thing goes for Ag109 on top, and 47 on the bottom. The number of protons are equal to 47 because that's the atomic number which is given on the bottom left. The atomic mass is equal to 109 because that's the number given on the top left. The number of neutrons are equal to the atomic mass minus the number of protons or the atomic number which is equal to 109 minus 47 which is equal to 62. The number of electrons is equal to 47 because that's equal to the atomic number or the number of protons. Again, with Ag, just 109 on the top. The number of protons is equal to 47 because we're given Ag, which is silver. If we look up silver on the periodic table, we find that it has an atomic number of 47. The atomic mass is again given in the top left, which is equal to 109. The number of neutrons is equal to 109 minus 47, which is equal to the atomic mass minus the atomic number, which is equal to 62. The number of electrons is still 47 because that's equal to the atomic number or number of protons. Again, if we're given silver-109, the number of protons is still 47 because we know silver has 47 protons or an atomic number of 47. The atomic mass is equal to 109 because that's the number given next to the dash in silver-109. The number of neutrons is equal to the atomic mass minus the atomic number, 109 minus 47 equal to 62. The number of electrons are equal to 47 because that's equal to the number of protons or the atomic number. Next we're going to talk about isotopes. The same problem follows. Indicate the numbers of protons, neutrons, and electrons in the following atoms. The first atom we're given is Ag106. Ag is still silver. Silver has an atomic number of 47, so the number of protons in Ag106 is 47. The atomic mass is given in the top left as 106. The number of neutrons is then the atomic mass minus the atomic number, which is 106 minus 47, which is equal to 59. The number of electrons is still equal to the number of protons, which is equal to 47. Next, we're given Ag107. Ag is still silver. Silver has a number of protons equal to 47. Its mass here is different. Its mass is equal to 107, because that's the number given on the top left. The number of neutrons is equal to now 60. 
107 minus 47, which is the atomic mass minus the atomic number, is equal to 60. The number of electrons is still always equal to the number of protons, which is 47. Next, we're given AG108. AG is still silver. Silver has an atomic number of 47, so its number of protons is equal to 47. Its mass is again different. It's now equal to 108 because that's the number given on the top left corner. Number of neutrons is also different. 108 minus 47 is equal to 61 neutrons. Number of electrons is still equal to number of protons, so number of electrons is equal to 47. Finally, we're given AG109. AG is still silver, with the number of protons equal to 47, an atomic mass of 109, and a number of neutrons equal to 62. 109 minus 47 is equal to 62. Number of electrons still always equal to number of protons, which is 47. Now, when we look at this all together, we see four different versions of silver atoms. They all have the same number of protons, 47. They all have the same number of electrons, 47. But they have different numbers of neutrons. The fact that these four versions of silver have different number of neutrons make them four isotopes of silver. Their atomic masses are different, not because the number of protons differs, but only because the number of neutrons differs. So if we have different versions of the same element with different number of neutrons, we call those isotopes of that element. Next, next we're going to talk about weighted atomic mass. Now when you look at the periodic table and you pull out any block of the periodic table, I looked at the periodic table and I picked out the silicon block. Now when you look at the silicon block, you see multiple things. You see the atomic symbol for silicon, SI, you see 14, the atomic number of silicon, you see the electron configuration of silicon, and you see the possible oxidation states of silicon. But what we're going to focus on is this number, 28.0855. This is the atomic mass of silicon. Now, we define atomic mass as the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So does this mean that silicon has a fraction of a proton or a fraction of a neutron hiding somewhere? No, that's not the case. It's impossible to have fractions of protons, neutrons, or electrons for that matter. So where does this 0.0855 come from? Well, let's find that out. Calculate the weighted atomic mass of silicon. And we're given a table with three columns. Isotopes, atomic mass, and percent abundance. We're given three isotopes of silicon, silicon 28, silicon 29, and silicon 30. Silicon 28 has an atomic mass of 28, silicon 29 has an atomic mass of 29, silicon 30 has an atomic mass of 30. What's new here is this percent abundance column. Silicon 28 has a percent abundance of 92.21%, silicon 29 has a percent abundance of 4.70%, and silicon 30 has a percent abundance of 3.09%. If you notice, if you add up all these percents, they add up to 100%. So what this means is that all the silicon atoms in the universe are either silicon 28, silicon 29, or silicon 30. So the number that we see on the periodic table for the atomic mass of silicon is a percent weighted atomic mass of silicon. So how are we going to calculate this weighted atomic mass of silicon? Step one, convert percent abundance to decimal form. The way we're going to do this is just divide each percent by 100. So if we divide 92.21% by 100, we get 0 0.9221. If we divide 4.70% by 100, we get 0 0.0470. If we divide 3.09% by 100, we get 0 0.0309. The next step is multiply the atomic mass by its percent abundance in, for each isotope. So we're going to make another column for atomic mass times percent abundance. For silicon 28, we're going to multiply 28 times 0 0.9221. For silicon 29, we're going to multiply 29 times 0 0.0470.
And for silicon 30, we're going to multiply 30 times 0 0.0309. We just took the atomic mass and multiplied it by the percent abundance in decimal form. We're going to evaluate those expressions now. And I rounded each expression to three decimal places to make it even. But that's up to you. Next step is we're going to sum the atomic mass times the percent abundance column. So we're going to sum 25.819 plus 1.363 plus 0 0.927, which are just the numbers that we calculated by multiplying the atomic mass by the percent abundance. Adding those together, we get 28.109, which is our final answer and the awaited atomic mass of silicon.